What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna continue our five-speed conversion on Project CB9. Last episode, we did the shifter and shifter cables in which we were 100% successful. Now today's episode, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the gauge cluster and some wiring issues that we've got for converting from an automatic to a five-speed. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, back at the Honda Prelude here. Wanted to grab the transmission, but as you can see here, transmission and engine are totally gone, but that's just what happens at these pickup parts. It's first come, first serve. And the prices of these things are relatively cheap for all these parts, so it doesn't surprise me. People building their cars and whatnot. So we'll just have to go ahead and see what other stuff we can find for our build here. Front and center. 2004 Nissan Sentra hand painted Nintendo theme. Got Pokemon, Mario Brothers, Rainbow on the back. Numerous stickers and lots of flowers glued to the roof of this vehicle. But there's a lot of glitter painted dashboard trim, stickers on the steering wheel, painted door panels. I mean, this is just, it's pretty crazy to see this. I mean, I gotta give someone respect to, you know, build something like this, and I'm sure they took pride in driving this vehicle down the street. But a lot of people talk about what they're gonna build, but they don't do it, but this person did, so, you know, it's just a subjective vehicle customization type theme here, but I've just never seen anything like this, especially at the yard. And I'm sure that they've put this thing right on the end of the row just so everybody can see this work of art but you know it is what it is i mean this is someone's creation and their vision you know can't really make fun of them so it is quite interesting to say the least volkswagen eos top impact hope these guys survived this one's another bad one right here 2002 Acura RSX base model in desert silver metallic. The interior's already been stripped out with the seats and a lot of the panels. It's too bad the front tan seats were a nice addition for Project CB9, but this car's already been in the yard for, I don't know, less than a week and this thing's already been gone through like, like savages. With this 93 Accord manual transmission, I think we're gonna go ahead and grab this gauge cluster. Since the automatic and manual gauge clusters are different, there's no automatic selector right here between the temperature and gas gauge. So it looks like someone's already done me the effort of removing this dash bezel. And it looks like there's just four Phillips head screws on the sides and then probably some harnesses to unplug. So I think we'll go ahead and grab this. Looked at the price and it's only $16.99. So not too shabby for an instrument cluster. 
1995 Honda Accord. They don't have any automatic CB7s here in the yard, so we need to make some wiring modifications on the automatic harness. So as you can see here, here's the automatic harness right here with all these wires connecting this automatic shifter. So we need to go ahead and grab this harness right here along with these wires so we can make some modifications to our car itself without having to cut the actual harness itself. So we're gonna go ahead and get this removed and then we should be good to go. Old school Integra from the late 80s, maybe early 90s. I don't know the year range on these. Had the pop-up headlights and everything. And this is what started Acura's performance line. 1989 Honda Accord LXI Coupe. This just landed in the yard a few days ago. That's too bad. Someone gave up on this car. Yeah, it is a nice car. These things are getting very scarce. Okay, here's the manual transmission instrument cluster. Picked up at the yard for 17 bucks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this gas and temperature gauge and we're gonna remove this from this cluster and we're gonna transfer on to the CB9 cluster. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up and start disassembling this thing. Here's the automatic gauge cluster we're dealing with right here. And the only difference between the manual and automatic is the automatic's got the gear selector right there between the temperature and gas gauge. In order to get this out, I need to remove the main dash bezel right around the radio and the AC controls and the vents and whatnot. So there's some buttons we need to remove. Need to remove these vents. Need to pop out the illumination switch right there. Need to remove the cruise control and sunroof switch. Need to pull out this tray and remove this vent. So I'll go ahead and show you which screws are needed to be removed in order to get this bezel out. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've got all the switches and the vents out of position. Now I can show you where the screws are located at to get this bezel off. So there's a screw up in here. There's a screw right there. Another one right here. And then there's two above here. There's one up there. Another one right there. Two above the radio. One right there. And there should be one below the cigarette lighter. But it looks like it's already been removed. So go ahead, take all the screws out and hopefully this bezel should release easily. Let's go ahead and get that done.
Okay, the dash bezel is successfully removed. Two things to mention. There's two screws that hold the radio in position right above the ashtray, so make sure you get those two bolts. I couldn't figure out why the radio area wasn't moving. So once you remove those two bolts, the radio will be able to be pulled out and then disconnect these harnesses right here and then the antenna right there. And then another thing to mention is this top steering column cover. I was able to get more clearance with the plastic bezel. So just uh, there's three Phillips head screws on the bottom, two on the right side right here and one on the left side. And once I was able to get those three screws out, the top of the steering column cover was able to come off. You don't need to remove the bottom side. As you can see, it's still intact. So just do yourself a favor and get those three screws only. But now that the dash bezel is removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove this instrument cluster here. And there is two Phillips head screws right there. And there's two Phillips head screws right there. And we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this harness and disconnect this harness. And I believe we'll be able to pull this thing downwards. And there's another harness on the very top. So let's go ahead and get those two items addressed here. And there we have it, the manual transmission converted automatic gauge cluster. No longer do we have the automatic selection gears right there in the center between the temperature and fuel gauge. So everything is complete, all put together, and now we can put this back in the car. Took some glass cleaner and a microfiber rag and cleaned this glass as best I could. And there's a lot of crap that can get you know, accumulated in this little channel right here. So best to just clean this thing off before you put everything back together. But we're going to go ahead, put this thing back in the car, and then uh, start reassembling all the dashboard. Okay, one thing to note before putting the dash bezel back in position. Now these top parts of these pieces of metal, these are tapped for metal screws with the fine threads. So you're going to want to use these fine thread screws instead of these coarse thread screws. So just keep that in mind.
Okay, dash bezel is successfully reinstalled. Everything is tight and buttoned up and got the steering column cover on there as well. And now we've got a instrument cluster without the automatic indicator right there in the center between the gas and temperature gauges. Uh, you can go ahead and leave those gauges in there as is if you want, but that car is just gonna be indicating as in park when you're in drive the whole time. But that's just a uh, personal preference, but you know, I figured I'd do this right and make this look like it's a uh, factory. So that's the reason why I had modified this uh, instrument cluster. Okay, let's move on to the wiring aspects now. Here's the wiring harness that connected to the automatic shifter assembly. Now this is the two wires for the neutral safety switch and see how thick those are compared to the other thin wires. So what I did is I went ahead and grabbed a spare harness from an automatic shifter assembly at the yard. And what I did is I basically just cut the connectors off. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna connect these two wires together. I'm gonna solder and shrink tube these um, together the correct way. I'm not a fan of uh, crimp caps, so you can use crimp caps if you want, but for a more secure connection that's gonna be fail safe, go ahead and solder these up and put some shrink tubing on there and it'll be a nice clean installation. So anyways, let's go ahead and get this wire soldered together. That way we'll complete the circuit on this. Here's the wiring harness from the automatic shifter. Now we're gonna have to go ahead and do some wiring modifications on this. So first things first, we need to make sure that the car thinks it's in park so we can remove the key from the ignition. So we're going to go ahead and connect the green and white wire and the black wire, and we're gonna connect these together. And the second part is the solid yellow wire and the black and green wire, we're gonna make extensions with wires. So we're gonna solder on some longer wires and those wires have to go into the engine bay and that'll connect onto the transmission for the reverse switch. So let's go ahead and solder some wires now.
This concludes the second installment of the five-speed conversion on Project CB9. We were able to successfully make the wire modifications on the shifter itself, making the wire extensions and also connecting two wires for the ignition. And then we're also able to successfully transplant one part of the gauge for the temperature and gas gauge from a manual transmission into our automatic gauge cluster. So I hope you guys can join us for the next installment where we go over the pedals aspect of this build. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.